So there have been major protests against the CCP's reinforcement of zero COVID policies, because China's currently locking down various parts of their cities and provinces. It may be futile to hope that this is, of course, a domino effect to topple the CCP, but hey, why not let's start with a white pill, shall we? Let's try and let's try and manufacture, manifest the ability for the Chinese people to overthrow their illegitimate rulers. Connor so, confirmed making stuff up. We can hope. We can hope, <laughs> all right? Connor loves spreading misinformation on the internet, bro. Yeah. Uh, well, today <laughs> Only we're joking. We're gonna, Only we're joking. gonna look at we're gonna look at how the ongoing situation is unfolding and what caused all this and yeah, yeah. Let's see if the Chinese can do something positive for once. If you want to know the sort of driving force behind why Chairman, not President, Xi and all of his little despots in the regions are accelerating the rate at which they're adopting zero COVID policies, you can subscribe to our website for as little as £5 a month and watch our book club that Callum and Bo did quite a while ago on Frank Dakota's Mao's Great Famine. It's part of a trilogy. This one I picked out specifically because... I noticed when looking through the articles that we're going to be going through shortly that the same mentality that caused provincial governors, party despots to accelerate the rate at which they're exporting grain or melting down the tools and dismantling houses just to make it so that the Chinese Communist Party's exports look good on a spreadsheet, how that contributed to the Great Famine is the same sort of philosophy that contributes to why they're making COVID measures and lockdowns uh, longer, sharper, more punitive, just to make sure that their particular region looks really good to well, the it's, it's a similar problem I think the Soviet Union experienced as well, where they would be a major exporter of grain mm. to try and look good on the world stage, when in fact what you're doing is just starving all of your own citizens who don't have any food. Yeah, 30 million kulak was the price to pay for a good spreadsheet, comrade. Anyway, on to the first one. Let's look at how all of these protests started, shall we? So, if you're wondering, did he choose the Epoch Times just to upset the Communist Party Chinese? Yes. Yes, I did. With the newly reported infections, China recorded a total of 32,943 transmitted cases on November the 24th. So they're having another COVID wave. And that's in a population that's over a billion, is it? Yes, so obviously the numbers are quite suppressed. If you were to go into the statistics and the fra and just going by percentages, that's a, just not even statistically significant. It's infinitesimally small. Obviously, those numbers are revised down because China, at the height of the outbreak, claimed they had zero COVID deaths, <laughs> even though it came from there. Sure. All right. Since the CCP has always concealed the scale of the outbreak, it's difficult for the outside world to know if those are the real numbers, of course. Um, Xinjiang City, the provincial capital of Hebei, has required all residents to stay at home since November the 21st and undergo five PCR tests in five days. So it's not necessarily one a day, but it's one in a certain period to make sure that you are COVID clear so you can resume normal travel at the CCP's behest, of course. Zheng, uh, Zhengzhou, I hope I've pronounced that right, the provincial, capit uh, provincial capital of Henan was put under lockdown from November 25th to 29th. People in Beijing, Daxing District and Beijing Economic and Technological Development Zones were ordered not to leave their communities on November 23rd. In megacity uh, Chongqing, in the southwest, all residential communities in Zhangbei district are now locked down, following China's National Health Commission's November 17th requirement for local authorities to prepare mobile COVID-19 cabin hospitals in advance. Such structures have been under construction in various areas across the country, so they're building quarantine camps in different districts to try and detain people so they can force their PCR tests and try and have a zero COVID policy. I mean, they've been pretty brutal on COVID for a long time. Josh and I earlier this year were covering all the fact that even if you were in a massive high rise, they would have the drones coming up to your balcony to make yeah. sure that you're not, I don't know, breathing forbidden air. They did uh, have the drones shout out, please suppress your soul's desire for freedom. <laughs> which is the most monstrous thing ever to announce, but there you go. Just over two weeks ago, the CCP State Council issued 20 new epidemic prevention regulations that loosen some of the COVID-19 restrictions while sticking to the general policy of zero COVID. On November 21st, the State Council issued four other documents in the same vein, saying that areas with no risk of community transition do not need to conduct regional mass PCR testing, and that areas where there are outbreaks but meet certain conditions can stop mass PCR testing. But of course, many areas are still doing that anyway to try and make sure that they look like they're going harsh enough, quick enough, they're going to achieve zero COVID first to get President Xi's approval. Chairman Xi, rather. On November 23rd, the State Council issued a document, supplementary to the 20 new regulations, to set various controls in high-risk and low-risk areas in the countries and cities where COVID cases have been reported. For low-risk areas, people should apparently avoid gatherings and are allowed to take individual preventative measures instead of following concentrated mandatory quarantines, as if we believe that's what the Communist Party are doing. As if they, we believe that they're not just snatching people off the street. 
total BS. The CCP's official People's Daily published eight articles in a row from November 12th to 20th, insisting on the strict zero COVID policy. Xinhuang City has responded to the 20 new regulations last week by starting to terminate the routine mass PCR testing for all residents. However, on 21st of November, the city's authorities issued an urgent notice to cancel the move and required six of the city's eight districts to carry out ma mass PCR testing for five consecutive days. So they're just subjecting you to make sure that you don't have COVID, so they're locking you in your homes and constantly sticking a swab up your nose. Well, it's completely arbitrary power to ensure that you're always on your toes. You can never know who you can trust. You never know what uh, messages from the government that you can trust. So that you're always in this constant state of anxiety, which makes you incredibly ineffectual. Mass to, formation to do anything. Yeah, exactly. So if we go to the next one, um, this is one of the things that has incited the riot. So we have that, that mass tension, that mass fear mongering, people whose souls are starved of freedom. And then certain events start to happen that really catalyze the Chinese people's disgruntlement with their totalitarian government. There was um, a residential block fire. It's not their Grenfell, but it's something pretty bad. Um, in Urumqi, I hope I pronounced that right, but correct me please, it's the western capital of Xinjiang. Anyone remember why Xinjiang is particularly important? the ex excellent camping facilities that they offer? Yes, would would be so. Apparently there was um, one Uyghur Muslim who has fled abroad to Sweden that the Independent interviewed, and his mother had lost uh, her life and her four children's lives in this fire as well, so they're among the dead. Um, state media said the compound has been categorised as low risk for COVID and residents were able to go downstairs. So, oh, they could have just run out, says the government. But a resident told BBC people were only allowed to leave their homes for short periods each day and that timing was controlled by authorities. <coughs> because of this, a further nine people were injured in the blaze. The state fire broke out on the 15th floor of the building at about 10 to 8 p.m. on Thursday and spread to higher floors. It was extinguished three hours later. Video from the scene posted by Chinese state media shows workers removing fences from near the compound and fire trucks being forced to wait. So, of course, the COVID measures had delayed the fire response, and the Chinese state media are lying about how rapid they could get there and that their COVID response um, has not impeded at all the fact that these people's lives could have been saved. Well, that's the thing. This seems to be implying to me from this information that we've got here that the people that, you know, that when you have to specify that the building that burnt down, or partially, the residents were allowed to go downstairs. Mm. Something as simple as that uh, makes me believe that whether or not they were allowed to doesn't mean that they were. It was looked uh, looked kindly upon to go downstairs. You're not supposed to move around mm. your rooms. You're supposed to stay in the whole time. So as fire breaks out, and you're not even necessarily sure if you're going to be in worse trouble if you stay in your flat, that you know you could get burned to death, or if you potentially disobey the rules as far as you understand them you might get an equally terrible punishment from the authorities yeah you might either burn to death or just be made to disappear um there was also another incident that happened recently there was a factory fire if we go to the next tab please um at a chinese city in anyang in henan province and it killed 38 people uh, that was at, on monday um at 20 past four and apparently they've detained a suspect, um, two other people hospitalised for minor inju injuries, so they're blaming it on arson. But it's interesting that they mention a factory here. One of the main things that spiked this protest as well are the Apple and Foxconn factory protests. So if we go to this one, this is some reporting by CBS News that came out yesterday. Um, Foxconn, who an electronics manufacturing company which put together Apple's iPhones, have said on Thursday that the pay dispute that triggered massive employee protests and violent pushback by police at a factory in central China, had slowed production and exports to the US and all of us customers over here. So they're saying, oh, um, Apple's stock price has dipped, you can't get your iPhone, so we're really sorry that we've caused this pay dispute and we've violated people's human rights. But it's all tangled up with the idea of COVID restrictions because what happened was, last month, thousands of employees did a walkout in October, and this is how CBS frames it over what they said were unsafe working conditions linked to the spread of COVID-19. So CBS in there says that the workers were walking out because they were fearing the spread of COVID-19. No, what actually happened was they were being made to sleep in the factories overnight and would be subjected to mandatory testing and would not be allowed to go home and, and see their families because they were trying to do their zero COVID policy. So they were detaining them at their workstations at all times. It's very much like when they put the netting in the other yeah. Apple stores to not throw them. I was about to say, even before COVID, the, uh, China forcing its workers to sleep in the factories and put them under some horrible working conditions is nothing unusual. It's nothing yes. new. Yeah, and we've actually got... Um, 
a podcast coming up soon on the UK's left-wing literature curriculum that mentions Inspector Calls. That features a workplace strike for which a woman and the co-conspirators were fired. But in that story, all the strikers are let back, except the people that organised it, and given their full pay at competitive rates. Um, in this one, while the workers were striking because they were made to sleep at the factory, Foxconn hired a slate of new employees and decided to just sack everyone, obviously, unfairly. Um, if we go to this next one, John, this is what happened when they got rid of everyone. If we scroll down, Bernie's tweeted this out. She's a good Twitter account. Go give her a follow. Despite Apple signing on to ESGs, this is their factory where they've just thrown all of the belongings of their workers out of the high-rise windows and just into the street. Brilliant. So for some of these people, it's probably this is probably all their possessions in the world. Yeah, and this is just a mountainous landfill being thrown out of the windows of these, these massive high-rise blocks. And, and this is where these gigantic, moralizing corporations are offshoring all of your jobs if you're in America, for instance. Yeah, and this is what Ricky Gervais was lambasting Tim Cook of Apple over when saying that, oh, Apple TV are making new series. Um, how about you shut up about politics because most of your stuff is made by slave labour and this is the results, as, as you can see. It turns out the Foxconn in the previous CBS article were blaming this now on a technical error. So in the process of adding new employees, they said, oh, accidentally the computer deleted your files. We never, we never meant to fire you guys. Just, it just happened to coincide with strike action. Because, of course, under communism, um, it's always someone else's what fault. What a coincidence. And just to, just to preempt, by the way, um, China, for all the people that say, well, the Chinese Communist Party, aren't, they aren't real communists. They're obviously state capitalists. Um, given that Marx and Engels, in their various writings, opined endlessly about the dictatorship of the proletariat, the dictatorship which will collectivise all property and, and redistribute it equitably and, and dismantle the state. They talked a lot about the revolution that gets you to the dictatorship, but they never actually said how to dismantle it and get rid of it. And I think it was Mikhail Buchanan that pointed out the fact that wouldn't it be really redundant if you had a representative proletarian dicta dictatorship to dismantle the dictatorship in the first place, because aren't the proletariat all super ethical? So the dictatorship can just continue forever. Well, not to get too deep into this kind of tangent, no. the, I'm uh, sure that Marx and Engels, being that they believed in, uh, what was it, um, dialectical materialism, yes. would have believed that part of the dialectical would just naturally fade away. It's almost like a mystical belief in, super, in a supernatural authority that would just sort of let this dictatorship fade away eventually, whenever it came time for it to shift into the next phase of the dialectic. I, instead of being that charitable, will just say, I do not think that the capricious grab of power was a means, but rather the end. So the dictatorship that has arisen and collectivised all property and ruled totalitarianly over everyone's lives and everywhere the communist doctrine has been tried and has reached its apotheosis in China, um, it is real communism because that's the design. And we can now see that people have decided well, I don't really like living under this all that much. I don't really like... I don't think they've only just decided. No, but they are deciding, um, en masse, at least, in the contemporary moment, to rebel, because they've decided that they've been locked up in their homes and surveilled at their factories far too long. Once again, not, not to de uh, derail, the CCP are obviously a monstrous organisation. Yep. They run China like the Mafia, but they are enabled, yet again, by the corporations who are more than happy to get uh, to use cheap Chinese labour to build you consumer products. Yep, and that's why globalisation was a mistake, because we should not necessarily have free trade, we should have fair trade, because this is unilaterally exploited by the worst kind of people in the world. They undercut our labour by using slave labour and technological surveillance, and that just creates a... Um, completely contingent group of countries that don't make anything for themselves and suddenly when they form bricks and they create an enemy pact we have no gold no gas no oil yeah we end up on. economically dependent on these countries and they use that for massive gains and political power over us yeah hence why i hope that this overthrow will amount to something i I'm I'm willing it. There we go. Not putting my stocks in it, but it is nice to see a bit. If of If anything major com of the, uh, comes of this, I'm willing to bet that it'll end up another day erased from history, like 1989. Yes. Yeah. The tanks that we can't mention, of course. Thanks, YouTube. Um, so in iPhone City, the giant hive that you saw producing the iPhones that had been throwing people's possessions out of the window, the factory that had 200,000 employees that we're seeing mass walks out, walkouts at, we've now had the violent protests start off. Hundreds of workers joined protests at Foxconn's flagship iPhone plant in China, smashing surveillance cameras and windows and clashing with hazmat-clad police over COVID restrictions and poor working conditions. The skirmishes broke out in the plant in Shengshou after workers marched out of their dormitories in a rare show of open dissent, verified videos which have been published on social media show. In one video, verified by the AFP, a man is shown with a bloodied face 
face while someone off camera says they're hitting people, do they not have a conscience? Another video shows overturned cars and smashed up COVID testing booths. So they're targeting the police and the COVID tents and the factory owners who are imprisoning them there. Take note for legitimate forms of protest to everyone that supported BLM in 2020 when they went around killing innocent police officers, members of the public, and smashing up, quote, black-owned businesses. Two billion dollars worth of damage in America, by the way. The Chinese know how to do it. Brilliant. So let's look at some protest footage, shall we? And we're not going to look at the individual videos. I'm just going to talk to them, talk to you about them, and then you can go and watch them in full in their own time. There's lots more still floating out there. It's a developing situation, so we can't get around to everything, but just some stuff I've seen. So this is an aerial shot, of course, from someone's apartment window. Look at how many party operants in the hazmat suits are trying to contain how many workers. The entire street is backed up. It almost looks like um, antibodies fighting an infection in the bloodstream in real time, except in this one I'm actually rooting for the people that are dressed like an infection. Mm. Let's see. It looks like the camera's panning up a little bit because it's not giving a great view of just how many people are on that street, but it no. is obviously a lot. And There's if we were to get a better view of it... Clearly going to be hundreds as they move up. So... That is, I mean, it's staggeringly nice to see that many people coming out and pushing back against the Chinese government for once. Because remember, these people have a social credit system, and if they're recognized by the smart cameras and, and digital surveillance in the streets, then they can have their entire lives taken away from them. So when you give them nothing to lose by locking them in their homes and depriving them of their livelihood, what's the old phrase? Um, every country is only three missed meals away from revolution. Well, I think the Chinese have found that out the hard way in many certain areas of the cities. If we move on to the next one, please. These are just some more Foxconn factory workers. So you can see all of the medical professionals here with their plastic riot shields. And the Foxconn folks are just battering them with barricades, bits of metal, throwing bits at them. Um, it's quite satisfying to see all of these government traitors being herded like idiotic sheep into a little terrified huddle, like a really bad phalanx. They look like um, an inept version of the Urukai trying to besiege Helm's Deep. It's quite nice. If we go to the next one, please. So... They're being equally as retaliatory, even if someone was thinking, oh, the Chinese Communist Party, oh, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're just, they can't help it, they're just following orders. Um, they're taking great joy in beating isolated protesters in the street. So if anyone is organising anything on WeChat and can speak Mandarin, um, make sure you tell everyone to stay together so you don't get picked off one by one. We'll go to the next one, please. So this is in Zhengxiao. So this is, again, uh, more of the factory stuff. They're, again, throwing barricades. It's just a, just a different angle here. And then you can see all of those people all the street is just full, and it must be upwards of a thousand people at least there. You can see phones in the air, people sticking their fists in the air, shouting freedom. Very nice. On to the next one. So it's spread to, and I don't know how to pronounce this properly, so bear with me. Um, it is Guangzhou, I hope. Um, they're actually attacking the little COVID pop-up centres now, and this is just a, just a commercial... City area, a little high street. People standing around watching in the middle of the rain. Go to the next one. We can just see it cumulatively sweeping. This is all starting to look like something out of The Purge. Yeah, but I'm still rooting for it. The protesters are tipping over a police van. Oh, yeah. Good on listen, you, lads. I'm, I'm not going to argue against people fighting back against communists. No. So, Jack Posobiec, who spoke Mandarin as well, has said that... Jack he's, Posobiec speaks Mandarin? Yeah, he's fluent. Oh, he, I didn't know. He served overseas in the Navy in China. Oh, he's, he reported sense. that the protesters have chanted, it started in Wuhan, it ends in Wuhan, and explicitly take down the CCP. So here are some students protesting the CCP outside Tsinghua University, which is one of the top ones in Beijing. I think that's where that lecturer spoke about um, paying American diplomats in Washington and that he's... His friends are back in the White House now that Hunter Biden and Joe Biden are in oh, control yeah. of things. So these are students at one of the most prestigious universities explicitly saying down with the government. If we can go to the just the next one, the one of the ways of protest they're using is they're holding up a mathematical formula, and it's Friedman's formula. <laughs> I'm sorry. Friedman. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. There's yeah, some... <laughs> there is some irony of Asians protesting using math, yes. <laughs> yes, there is. That's, that's beautifully mimetic. Yeah, and, and good on you, fellas. Good on you for doing it. Yeah, I mean, I don't get that, so, you know. Yeah, and this is spread to wider We've Beijing now. a quality of protester in China. Yeah, and this is this is streets in Beijing, the capital. Thousands of people. I, I hope it comes to something. We can't say it will, but we hope so. So just to move quickly on, um, there's a video here. We, we won't play it for too long, but just so you can listen to... Uh, they're emulating the Canadian truckers. Uh, I was going to say, I've just seen your notes, so maybe turn your volumes down just in case. Let's go. There it is. Savor it and enjoy it. 
nice to see public support, just people driving past. Simply in the fact that, yeah, we had a couple of times. It's all right, John, we can stop that one there. Thank you. And then there's Wait. also something that's happened here as well. There's a BBC journalist been arrested on the ground in China while covering this. Oh, and really? He's a Yeah, he's a Brit. Ed Lawrence is arrested and handcuffed while covering the protests in Shanghai. He was held for several hours before being released. During his arrest, he was beaten and kicked by the police. This happened while he was working as an accredited journalist. It's very worrying that one of our journalists was attacked in this way while carrying out his duties. We have no official explanation or apology from the Chinese authorities, and you won't get one, beyond the claim that the officials who later released him said that they had arrested him for his own good in the case he caught COVID from the crowd. <laughs> We're going to beat COVID out of you. Oh, that's, that's brilliant reason things right there. It's hilarious as well though because a bunch of politicians have since come out and condemned this but these are the exact same politicians who voted for lockdown measures which they copied from the Chinese so you're a bunch of awful hypocrites. Well the western political class does seem to be trying to distance itself from lockdown measures or at least blame for lockdown measures until of course it will become politically expedient to push them again. Well, speaking of which, the CCP seem to be distancing themselves from lockdown measures as well because at first they've gone through the typical leftist cycle of um, it's not happening so saying China's capital city keeps markets running during fight against COVID-19. So the um, supposed origin, according to the, to the Chinese, that definitely wasn't the US military, according to them, and, and definitely wasn't the Wuhan lab that is named after the COVID virus that spread it, according to every sane thinking person in the rest of the world. So it's not happening. We move on to the next one. November 28th, um, precision urged as cities rolled out an optimized COVID response. Okay, so it's happening, but it's a good thing. We're, we're doing it well, right? All right, all good. Next one. Uh, one of the cities has now resumed public transport, so so it's happening, and, and, and it's all right. We've got we've got it under control. We're we're doing even better. You know, we're adjusting. We're listening to the people. It's, it, it, it's a good thing. And then and then finally, um, it's the Western media's fault. Western media badmouth China's epidemic, like how Washington fans the flames in Russia Ukraine conflict. <laughs> okay, thanks. And China. The second part of that headline. Yeah, but also tell me more about your concentration camps, I guess. And if we just go on to the last two, um, now crossing to your typical white leftist, Taylor Lorenz is stumping for the CCP. I did see this over the weekend. So the Washington Post did a headline saying, a coronavirus outbreak on the verge of being China's biggest pandemic has exposed a critical flaw in Beijing's zero COVID strategy, a vast population without natural immunity. So the Washington Post is saying natural immunity. Of course, on YouTube, we're not sure what we can actually say about that. So I guess the Washington Post are just conspiracy theorists. And Taylor Lorenz is right. Because Taylor I Lorenz disavow says, everything in this entire segment, Taylor, just to be safe. Taylor Lorenz says there's no lasting natural immunity to COVID. You can get COVID over and over and over again because there are so many endless evolving strains and antibodies wane. Also, choosing not to kill off millions of vulnerable people as the US is doing isn't a critical flaw. So the the Jay Lorenz is saying China are saving lives by locking people in their apartment complexes. Okay, and she's suggesting as well that the US is currently killing off millions of vulnerable people in the same way that, that she also probably believes that Christopher Columbus intended to bring over those germs because he was just evil like that. Oh, she she she, she recently watched Wakanda Forever, did she? Yes. On to the next one. Um, just last, I thought it's worth pointing out how the new cycle of the smear merchants move so quickly. In in the left headline by Sky News, it says, Remarkable bravery. Anti-lockdown protesters return to the same spot in Shanghai after being pepper sprayed by police. Keep that in mind, because on the right, how COVID conspiracists and anti-vaxxers are organised and making money. That was talking about the anti-lockdown protests in the UK. You know, the same measures that we were subjected to, that they copied from China. So, all I have to finish with is um, God bless the people of Greater Taiwan. Hope you overthrow your government. Don't know if it will happen, but we can try and will it. And to all of the apologists in Western media, burn in hell. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the premium videos we do. There's one on the politics and psychology of Nightcrawler. If you'd like to find out what else we're putting out, you can follow us on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.